Hey guys, how's it going? Tasty Mond here. Been a little while since we've done a Fire Emblem video for the Tubes of You. Nothing spectacular here. Actually, been taking a little bit of a break from Fire Emblem because some stuff happened, like uh, RE4 came out. And uh, if anybody watches anything else on my channel, maybe they'll know I'm quite a big Resident Evil fan um, of the older games and that. So I was really, really surprised that I loved the 4 remake. So that kind of like put me on a bit of a break from this game and didn't he really do any of the DLC or anything apart from the first two missions because I was just too busy playing that, you know? Uh, but before I did go on a little bit of a break there, I was do in the middle of doing a third run. Usually when I'm playing Fire Emblem, I kind of focus on only playing it when I'm like doing it, you know? I really only play much in between other than focus on the the playthrough. So the, like, the stuff in the beginning in that of this third run, uh, I can't really re really remember all too much of like what happened in the playthrough, but I, I remember like the major parts about the units and stuff. So I kind of wanted to do like a unit roundup for how I feel about some of the characters I was using and who was the most fun to use. And it was another no DLC run actually. Uh, like I've said before, in some of the videos, I'm not, not too big a fan of how the DLC is implemented in this game. Don't really like the extra emblems and stuff because I feel like they're just a bit too overpowered for the game. So they kind of break it a bit too much. So, well, I was in the middle of doing like a no DLC run for the third run and finished it up last night, finally. Um, and it's not like I didn't enjoy the, enjoy the playthrough. I did enjoy it. I just got broken up with uh, playing some other games in between, you know. I guess we'll just talk about our main character for a little bit. There's one thing I do like talking about with this game. It's actually like how units performed and and like this, the stuff that we done with them in the Madman playthrough I, I, and what skills we had. Um, this this main character, from what I remember, I, I really used her as a, a carry in the beginning, actually. Divine Dragon and just promoted them as soon as she was at like level 10. You know, that's kind of how I went about every character in this game. Uh, I did use this strategy early on that I talked about before, where we put the Micaiah engrave on a silver blade and we get it really, really early. And that was really, really powerful with this main character. I think it's a really good thing to be putting like a do dodge weapons on the on the silver blade or any sort of like great lance and that. They can they can really do some disgusting shit early on, you know? Also two range living and she got Corrin eventually. But in the beginning she was actually she actually had Marth and she was the best character on the team in terms of damage. Uh, in the later stages of the game though, she really just became the utility Corrin bot kind of thing, you know what I mean? And I just think it worked so well with this team in general because we had so much heavy hitters. Um, that it kind of feels like this is the way the character just works out when you if they are a, car a carry early on, they become one of the most major, the major damage dealer. And that's like kind of what's happened two playthroughs in a row with me now, actually. And then in the later stages, they kind of fall off in the damage and just become part of utility only. If they're staying in Divine Dragon. It really feels like it's pretty calculated early on that that's how it works. That whoever gets Marth is really a good carry early on, you know. And the main character suits it perfect, you know. But uh, just comparing this character to the last Alir that I had that done the same role kind of thing, she's actually got like a difference in 10 speeds, so it can just actually show you how unlucky you can get with this main character sometimes. Not that we needed the speed, but sometimes later later in the runs I needed like a 2 range Draconic Hex, and if they had 2 range, she was getting doubled and dying. So that was kind of a bit of a problem. Levin Sword's pretty heavy too, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that caused a wee bit of a problem that didn't happen in some of the other, like the second run that I had. Uh, I will say this, I put Cantor Plus in her in the end because I was like, oh god, I don't know what to get, you know? And I put Speed Plus 2 on here as well, so she's actually, Christ. But yeah, I think Cantor Plus is absolute overkill. I don't know why, I just chose it because I didn't know what to, to get and we had like an extra thousand. I should have got Momentum. Um, Momentum would have been better, but it's no like she was a major damage dealer anyway, so I guess Cantor Plus was better, but it, it really didn't come into play. It feels like uh, just overkill Cantor Plus with the three extra spaces. You know, normal Cantor feels better. I think there's extra stuff to spend your thousand on. Overall, though, I think like, like it was definitely one of the best characters on the team because in the beginning she was a carry, and in the second half she was a complete utility and... 
stopping everyone so that our other killers could destroy them. It was a really fun character to use and just enjoy the main character a lot more in Divine Dragon than I did in my first unit video when I was talking about like hating them and being boring and that, but that's because they were the Byleth bot and that is a lot more boring for the main character than a, than a, than a Corrin, I would personally say. I always thought Ivy was a pretty good character, but she could be better. The thing is though, I think there's like certain characters... What I did with Ivy in this game is I just kept Lin on her for the whole game. The whole game, Lin was on Ivy. And it's definitely one of the best Ivy... Uh, one of the best Lin users I've seen. She just absolutely wrecks. She's fucking wrecking. It was, it was insane. I put the, what's this, the Byleth one on there, so she's got extra dodge in that from no getting crit. So like it just, and she's got extra hit rate as well from the, the Byleth tattoo. So like, man, I, I have to say like, with some characters without like, without like really good emblems just feel like they're pretty mediocre. And Ivy kind of does feel like that. She did on my first playthrough, but she was like the person who was stopping people with Corrin, stopping them in their place. It was good, but it wasn't like, holy shit, this unit is amazing and fun to play and actually killing everything in sight. But like with Lynn, she just went from being like a pretty good flying magic user who's who's like can spam some three range here and there and not double and kill stuff to absolutely annihilating everything in our path. And I feel like, I've heard some people say they think at, like Lynn is better on physical units. Don't know. I'm not entirely sure because I genuinely feel like she gets the plus five extra speed from Lynn naturally. And then she gets the extra 10 from speed taker. You know what I mean? And she's also got like speed plus five. What the hell? Yeah, so she's got an extra 10 speed here. Jeez, it's like, it's shitloads. But what I'm saying is, it feels like Lynn really stands out on a character like Ivy, you know? And she just went from being someone I wasn't terribly impressed by, seriously, to being like someone who's just insane. And I don't really think anybody can I think there's a reason why they actually introduced Lynn on Ivy in the story because I don't think there's anyone who could be as devastating as, Le as Lynn is with Ivy. Straight up, I don't think so. Let's just say I put it on somebody like Pam. He's not a flyer. You know what I mean? I probably could make him like a griffin flyer and that, but that's just going a wee bit too out of our way to do something specific. Ivy's in the base class, you know, just promoted and she's absolutely wrecking everything in sight with it, you know, it's, it was amazing. Now, I forget if I gave her a spirit dust. You get three spirit dusts in the entire game, and I think I did. I think I gave her one spirit dust, but I can't be 100% certain, because I definitely, I know who I gave my other spirit dusts to, but I definitely think I gave one to Ivy, because I didn't give two to everybody else, do you know what I mean? Uh, but overall, I think Ivy was one of my favorite characters in the game, actually, this time. One of the most fun characters to even play. Couldn't he recommend it enough if you, like, fancy doing a playthrough where Ivy's an absolute top tier, like, what the fuck unit. I've seen some people say you could just put Speed Taker on a magic unit and that, but I, yeah, but I don't think that would be half as good with Ivy. Just Speed Taker. Because she benefits from having the extra plus speed from Lynn. You know what I mean? She gets access to speed plus five as well. So it really, really patches up her weakness, which is speed, right? I don't know, because usually she can't even like double and kill stuff anyway. And I don't think with speed taker, she's no doubling like certain enemies later on, like sword masters and that. And with Lynn, she actually is. You know what I mean? So yeah, and she's got that fat ass magic stat to kill everything. I'm just saying, I can't really give her enough praise in this playthrough because it was so fun to use her. It was so fun just demolishing everything in sight with Bolognese and, and, and Lynn on her. And I, I, I took it off her on a couple of levels here and there. More slower levels, like the palace invasion on Psalm. I put it on Alchris just so we could abuse Cover Astra to get every boss out of the room and make it as piss easy as possible. 
couple of levels like that I took her off her where she wasn't even needed. You know, where we weren't even playing faster. So yeah, overall she was one of my top four units in the game. And then we had Amber here, who I kind of like showcased in one of our videos uh, earlier with like chapter 11 made easy and he kind of like helped out with that stuff. I was just showing what it was like. So we did use him for this full playthrough here and it was really good early on. It feels like it was really, really good early on and a bit into the middle, but then our other characters started just like overshadowing. No necessarily Amber, because he's impressive, but just overshadowing the warrior class. Does that make sense? Yeah, I cannot help but say that in the later stages of the game, the warrior class just didn't feel as needed to me because, man, everything else was just killing everything. You know what I mean? And warriors no necessarily Dublin. So we kind of just done the basic killer stuff with them. But everything else was like dying later on to the point where I didn't even need him killing anything. So he was kind of just like sitting about. You know what I mean? But I, I have to say, early on, when I was using Amber, I used him as soon as he was coming in. And for the rest of the game... and. Especially for when he comes out. Is it chapter 7 or chapter 8? Chapter 7, I think. No, it might be 8. But I used him right there. Gave him a master seal. And I tell you, like, the other chapters after that, he was really, really good and helped us out. Chapter 10 was like a joke because he was absolutely pissing all over the enemies. Ugh, I don't know what else to say other than, like, getting a character like him in this kind of class early on and a bit into the mid-game is definitely one way to trivialize that part of the game, is, you know? But later on... Once our other characters' builds have started going, it just feels like the warrior class kind of like falls off a wee bit. Like the standard warrior and Ike thing, you know what I mean? So maybe there could be something that we could do later on in the game that would be more better than a warrior. And I'm not quite figured out what that would be. It's a good um, area to have covered, but I never used Merciless once in this playthrough, just to put it into perspective. What well, something that was really, really powerful in a blind maddening run becomes absolutely almost useless because we have so many options available to us with like just a little bit better knowledge on the game you know he had can he had i gave him can earn i gave him vantage plus the vantage plus never came into play because like in the later sections of the game we were just killing stuff already it was really really fun to use early on and i do think amber is a good character in this game Probably better than what people give him credit for. I don't know what people think about the current tier lists of the games or whatever. It's, I, I done like a top five favorite units a wee while ago and it's good to see that people still think they are among the best units in the game. So we're kind of right early on with some predictions, right? It's pretty obvious how this game looks straight up. But yeah, overall he was really, really fun. And Silver Great Axe barely used it. You know, I'm serious. Mostly he was doing bow stuff. Bow stuff and a wee bit of Killer Axe stuff and, and that was really it, but... Yeah, we could do something better in the late game, because I don't feel like at this point now I need a warrior anymore. Dancers the Dancer just gave the encounter and quality time. Seemed pretty good to me. If you've seen the little video that we just put up, he killed Somron, which was pretty funny. Panda Man, I used him again. I've actually got two Mage Knights this playthrough. I just like Pan a lot. He's one of my favorite characters and one of the best characters in the game. Believe it or no, this is the worst Pan I've had. Um, yeah, he was, this is the worst Pandreo I've had, and it's because, like, in all these levels, he only dinged magic, like, three times out of, like, 18 levels. I'm serious, it might be, like, four or something, but, dude, he had, like, no magic early on. But he was still doubling and, like, doubling everything, so he was kind of, like, a bit of a Jagan. Even, like, a bad Pandreo is still an amazing Pandreo, you know what I mean? He was fantastic still. Still one of my favourite characters in the game. And I still think Mage Knight is just kind of like trivializes a lot of enemies, you know. <laughs> Mage Knight in general and Mage Knight Pan is definitely the way to go. And if he can kill like enemies early on, he's setting up kills for some of your weaker members as well. So in a way, he's not doing any wrong, you know. It's still like an amazing character and I can't help but use him again. I was kind of like, one of the reasons I did use him is just because we were comparing him to another character. You know, and seeing how they compared. But bearing in mind, we got like barely any magic level ups with Pan. So if a bad Pan exists, believe it or no, this is one of them. Because he just got no magic. But he was still doubling everything. Can't earn speed plus three. Staying on top of the Dublin. 
was still like amazing. Gave him um, Selica later on to help with his magic stat because it was a bit lower, you know. So, Panette, this is one where I was dabbling with. And I thought for this playthrough, we would go full out Wolf Knight Panette. And this is honestly one of the funnest characters and classes I've played in the game yet. This combination, which is pretty obvious early on, because she's got proficiency in the daggers. People laughed at this combination early on. They were like, oh, well, it just shows how cha like people's tune change just by seeing something in action, you know? But um, people were like, oh, what you got to do, put her in Wolf Knight, lol. Yeah, like, why wouldn't I try Wolf Knight? At the end of the day, creating a warrior who can crit is no, like, rocket science. Sure, Panette's the best at doing that, but she's also best at... So, she's, she's, like, amazing at so many other things. All that really needed fixed up for this character to work was the speed stat. Which, as you can see here, is at 39. So, what we done to fix that? I gave her two speed wings. Yes, I gave her two speed wings. Early on, I gave her Lucina. So she got, you know, so she actually did get the speed buff from being on Lucina. So it was like plus four speed or something at whatever bond. So I was like, okay, that kept her Dublin. Then I got the speed wings out of the story. I was like, I'll give her one. And then I gave her another one. So I gave her a total of four extra speed and she's got the speed plus four which I think is pretty good, and I gave her a saved up for Wrath. So I didn't give her Canter, so it was a wee bit more, you know, but because she was mostly like an enemy phaser and a player phaser, I didn't really need her cantering as much, so I did have to keep my eye on her, but she also had to hold out plus, so that she couldn't really die to much shit. And also, I think she gains another two extra speed from Rise Above. And being in dog, she also gains the plus one extra move. So we're taking advantage of Roy quite a bit with that. Like, this was definitely one of the funnest characters in the game, man. I also gave her a steel dagger to take advantage of the plus 10 inherent crit that steel weapons get. So silver dagger was useless because the steel dagger was straight up better. Especially for like what we were trying to do with Panette anyway. Um, it was, it, it's crazy how good she was. She like almost like soloed the entire last map and near enough. It was pretty dumb, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I usually split my team up on the last map. One few dudes right, few dudes left, and Panette just they all walking in and dying, man. You know, like even like Sombron getting crit like four times. It's it's like silly shit, you know. It, it really was. But if you want someone to absolutely laugh at the game, and especially, like, my, my idea as well was for, for troublesome chapters, like, Christ, was it chapter 17? Was it chapter 19? You know, that stupid chapter with Marv warping everyone? I was like, man, I need to make sure I get someone who can double those dogs on the bottom, on the bottom part. And she was the one who could do it, you know, and killing them. So it was really good. This was... I don't know if it was my top cat. I don't know, it's hard to see who my top characters, top character is in this entire playthrough, but it's between Ivy, Panette, and Zelkov. So, like, and maybe Chloe, but, like, I, I don't think Chloe was, like, the main one, but, like, Panette, though. I would maybe say it was Panette, man. She was, like, absolutely going ham. Like I was saying, Warrior Panette is cool and all, but Dog Panette is, like, what the fuck? Absolutely amazing character. Couldn't recommend it enough. She, all she had was like one speed wing. And I'll tell you what, actually, I think I gave her an energy drop as well. The reason I gave her an energy drop is because to stay on top of the strength that we were losing by going in dog. So, yeah. Yes, I did give her an energy drop. Maybe I gave her two because we get three energy drops. And there's a good chance I gave her two to stay on top of that part where we put her in dog. She was losing strength going into dog. So I was like, I'll patch that up just by giving her these two energy drops. I think that definitely happened. Um, so yeah, two energy drops and a speed wing. Yeah, that is a wee bit of investment, but the return in it was too good to be true, to be brutally honest. All she really used was the, the steel dagger with the corn and grave. And I can't really say much else good about it. I, I think Roy is maybe still kind of like underappreciated by a lot of people 
Don't know. Tell me how you feel about it, but Rise Above is really... Still looks like it's slept on Roy in general, and like having Roy on the dogs, especially someone who was as broken as this, kind of shits on the game a wee bit, you know? But yeah, maybe she was too strong, but like that's what it's all about sometimes, eh? It's like, our, I, the idea for this playthrough was to create like four or five really fucking good characters and have everybody support them. You know what I mean? That that was the whole idea. I think that's that was the way to go about it. That was the whole idea as well. Make sure we have no trouble in the 20s. You get what I mean? It's like, I don't want to be having trouble in the 20s anymore where I was on the blind maddening run struggling because we didn't have anyone who could deal fucking damage. So the entire, just make sure we have a team of elite units who can piss all over those maps, essentially. And that, that you know, Panette was one of those people. Ivy was one of those people. And the next guy was also one of these people. Zelkov with Sigurd. Disgusting strats. Man. Don't know. He's better than... He was, I'm no, he's no better than Kagetsu by default, but what we turned him into, he was better than the, the, the Kagetsu Wyvern from the first playthrough. Um, because... A, a Lin and Wyvern is probably no killing anything, even with axes. So you got to think of other ways to make them kill stuff, right? So, there was a wee bit of babying in the beginning, because I didn't want to use Zelkov as a thief. But I had to use him as a thief to get him to, like, level 21, right? I remember. So I had to favor him early on. And gave him a buff dagger so that he could mostly get XP from the midsection of the game and the psalm parts. And it was fine. That was fine. Although, when I did put him into Wyvern at the start, it wasn't as impressive as what you see here. You know, obviously. Because we needed to get him going a wee bit. His hit rate was bad with axes. It was pretty bad, you know what I mean? I was like, oh dude, how are we going to fix this? And that's where the Sigurd came into play because we dabbled with it a wee bit on the Veronica power log. If you remember, I had Kigetsu with Sigurd and I was like, oh, this is pretty good, so maybe we can do something here. But one of the main reasons I wanted to make Zelkov a Wyvern is because he has really, really good build by default. So eventually he wouldn't get weighed down by a Silver Axe, which is what happened. And he's also got a really, really good personal with not quite... Minus 10 hit on foe during combat, if the foe initiates. So, it's a relatively low hit rate they have with, on them with a silver axe with the Lucina engrave. Which was really, it, it felt a wee bit unfair. But at the end of the day, this character took a bit to get going. That's what I mean. The whole reason he's got Sigurd as well is the extra hit rate that he gets. So this Tomahawk didn't even need buffed by a tattoo to get like near enough 100% hit rate on people either, you know, pretty good. I gave him a saved up for speed taker and that took a wee while. So it's not like there wasn't a wee bit of babying going on to like, uh, but it's not like Zelkov needed babied. He just needed, I needed to guide him and like we had a plan for him and it took a wee bit to get going. That That's what I'm saying. So like getting, getting a speed taker without all these books that you just get out the fucking well and that, because I can't even remember how much he comes in with. Maybe a thousand? Comes in with like a thousand SP? Or is it like... I don't think it's 1500. I forget. But I had to use him a lot in order to build up 2000 points to get Speed Taker. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be able to get Cantor, so we have to give him the Sigurd. But it was worth it. And all we did was stack up this speed in order to make sure he was Dublin. I don't know. It just makes me feel like... I don't know, this kind of playthrough, it just like, it got me feeling like Ivy's just the best one we'll in in general. I don't know how else to put it, but obviously there's plenty of other combinations that have not been like looked at, but I don't know. I feel like if I put Lynn on Zelkov, she, it would nowhere near have been as good as just having standard speed taker. Because then I wouldn't have had Sigurd, who is buffing his strength, buffing his hit rate. And I don't mean buffing his strength in a normal way, but buffing it with momentum. You know what I mean? Buffing it with momentum rather than just a flat out strength stat. So like it's better in a way because he's doubling and sometimes that would squeak out kills on really chunkier enemies. And I gave him a steel great lance plus three for like some really nasty overrides. 
Dude, I can't help but say like this was one of my favorite characters to play in the game as well, this run. It was really impressive. But, like I say, it took a wee bit to get going, but it wasn't like anything bad because D Zelkov is good anyway. So it was just a way to keep him on top by... He just feels like he would work in Wyvern. You know what I mean? And he did. I don't know if he would work in Wyvern though, if you didn't like do what I done here. That that's what I'm saying. I, I think the only closest way you'd get to it is probably by giving him Lin, but Lin with a Wyvern isn't he all that. You know, it's no like all that. They'll, they'll they'll probably struggle to kill stuff and and one round them if you just give them Lin, because even Kagetsu did. That's what I mean. So that's why we had the Sigurd. That was the whole point. Take the good part of what Lin does to a wyvern, which is speed taker, and then give them someone like Sigurd for that extra killing power that you can put on something like a silver axe. And Zelkov don't get weighed down by a silver axe, so it just, it was a naturally good fit. You get what I mean? Now I did buff his ass with stat boosters. Um, not necessarily the stat boosters you might think though. I gave him um, one strength one energy drop, which I think is okay. I was like, who else am I giving it to? I gave two to Panette to keep her strength up on the dog, because these were my two heavy physical damage dealers, Panette and Zelkov, you know? So, yeah, one energy drop, and I think I gave him a couple of secret books just to help out with the hit rate. There was nobody else to give them with. So that helped as well with, with Sigurd, who's buffing his hit rate, because he did have a bad hit rate early on, straight up. He's got a pretty shaky hit rate early on, right out the bat when you change him into Wyvern. Unless you're using a sword, but I really wanted to go axes, so. And I gave him one speed wing, so he would have been... I gave him one speed wing just so we could get him up here. You see, he'd be reaching 45 with a full speed taker, so. And that's a really good speed stat, you know. Defense boosters, though. I gave him... I might have gave him them all. He's at like 40 defense here. I think I did. I I didn't give them to anyone else because the later sections of the game, we didn't need a tank. So I was like, we might as well just make him as buff as possible, you know, like. And he, one weakness about Zelkov is he can be, he does have a low luck stat. You know, that that's, I guess that's one of his major problems that is, is that he does have a low luck stat, but at the end of the day, it wasn't anything that was crazy bad because we were using the Lucina engrave. So like he had more dodge on enemies. You know what I mean? He never got crit in our entire playthrough, put it that way. So it didn't become an issue for me. Uh, and it's not like I was divine pulsing crits or anything. I wasn't doing it. It was playing as careful as we could. I wouldn't have took someone that wasn't like ridiculous. Um, but yeah. Top three characters were definitely like Ivy, Panet, and Zelkov. They were my top three characters in the game to play. And like, he even had like the hammer here, which was really, really nice with momentum, which kind of like squeaked out some kills on armor knights. This, this character was absolutely amazing, but we made him amazing. I don't think bog standard Zelkov and Wyvern would be all that impressive, um, unless you were doing Sigurd and speed stacking. Which is what we've done here. And the Lucina engrave, like I said in my engraving video, is my favourite engrave. So it added to his personal and made him the most fun wyvern I've played in the game so far. Even over the Chad Getsu. And also the override, just to say, the, the override with the speed taker. You kill like three guys in a row, you get like six speed right there. It's <laughs> pretty silly stuff. But Chloe was the next one who was the another major damage dealer on the team. In the beginning, she stood out by being like her, your normal physical, your normal physical uh, griffin, you know? But later on, I was talking about it in my top five units guide because I dabbled with a little bit of Mage Knight Chloe. I was like, oh wow, she's almost as good as Pan Man. <laughs> and she is, actually. So what I done was at the halfway point when our strength was falling off a little bit, because we're not using DLC, so we can't take advantage of books. You know, it's, it is actually a completely different game, even with a well. Let's not like pretend like it's not. It is. 
So like you're kind of like saving up and trying to find other answers to find damage rather than just reading a bunch of books out the well. I can't help but say it because I, I, I don't really like this well stuff, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Changes the game too much, but what we wanted to do was uh, take advantage of the fact that she's really, really fast and Mage Knight seemed like a really, really good fit. And as you can see here, she's got a fat ass magic stat and she was doubling and killing everything. So that's what I was saying when I done like my top five favorite unit guide and I put her in as an honorable mention is because I feel like the best way to, to utilize Chloe, it feels, without any DLC and all that, is you keep her as a physical class for the first half of the game and her strength will get a bit worse during the halfway point, unless you want to really patch it up and save for stuff that's far too expensive. Um, I, th I feel like it was just a natural thing to do to uh, put her in Mage Knight because she gets equally as good magic growth as strength growth, I think. So, and magic just becomes far more valuable in the later sections of the game rather than someone who's chipping with physical. So that was that was the idea there. And I gave her Micaiah when we got her back and she's got like 38 magic here. And I gave her one spirit dust. So she's had one spirit dust which I think was pretty good. Definitely one of the best characters in the game, Chloe. But like I'm saying, I, th I think if you want to like keep her as good as what she is in the beginning, I think she has to be changed into a magic class, you know? Like I'm saying, I know there's things you can do with a well, like stack SP and get like lance power times five and sword power times five and that. That's a completely different, you cannot get that naturally, like without the well. So, like, I don't like playing with DLC. Uh, this is the game in its rawest form, and I prefer it that way. So, I think Mage Knight Chloe... It's not that, it's not any investment, that's what I mean. It's just a way of turning a character who's already good, and her strength falls off, into someone that will still contribute, and then eventually she just gets better and better and better. Just like Pan, she's actually better than Pan, here. Like, he's got 30 magic and 30 speed. She's got 32 and 38. So, like, that's what I mean. Like, that's how much more magic she was dinging, like, than him, you know? But I did give her one spirit dust to catch up with Pan in the early stages. You get what I mean? So I gave her, like, one spirit dust, I remember, at that point. But it felt worth it to me. So these are my four heavy hitters of the game, was Chloe, Zelkov, Ivy, and Panette. Those are my four killers, you know what I mean? And, uh... The idea was to have like two mage knights and ivy as well just so we were overwhelming the enemies with a fat ass magic stat that was fast and killing and that that is actually what i think trivializes um the end game parts of this game is is a fat ass magic stat with some really good physical units covering it like panet and, and zelkov because nobody else done that kind of damage you know um next character was celine here who, who i honestly loved her I think the character is amazing. Really, really fun character to play. In the beginning, I was trying to do the Levin Sword stuff that everybody raves about, but to be honest, you're not getting that unless you use the DLC, so I didn't do it. Um, I, I know some people are under the impression that with a free update and you get all those steel weapons, it's fair game to use. I'm not one of those people. Like, if it came later in the game as, a, as an update, then it is con like you do not get access to steel weapons before like chapter eight or something. So no, I'm not going to use ch steel weapons for fucking chapter two and three and all that or whatever. It's it's stupid. I think it's like, against. I, I just feel like it ruins the game's balance as well. And I don't know why they done that. But yeah, if you're going to like go out of your way to use the updated stuff and get like a Levin sword with Celine early on, you're really going to be like trivialized on that portion of the game as well. And if you think that's fair, but you don't think other stuff's fair, I don't know what to say about that. It's like, you shouldn't have a Levin sword that early. So I didn't do it. Um, I didn't want to have like some sort of like, what felt like a fake character. I know it's a free update, but I still don't like that stuff that fucks with the game balance, you know? So my Celine didn't have Eleven Sword and fucking Jean's power log and that, because that's just beyond silly. Um, but yeah, I really liked using her early on. She just had Elfire, 
And I gave her a leaven sword when we started getting steel weapons, you know? But he, by then, the characters are too fast, so she's no doubling them. <laughs> you know, she's actually not. So unless you specifically use the updated steel weapons that you get for free, that's the only way Celine's becoming this busted thing in the beginning, I think. Um, which I, I don't think is a rep fair representation of the character, but... You know, it is to some people because they count free updates as the like the base game, but I don't know. I, I don't think you should be using steel weapons before you're given access to them in the story and the shop. If I was going to give my two cents on that, you know, it's it's like, why? You know, it ruins game balance even more. And I don't know why they're okay with that, but it just seems like Engage as a whole, they're okay with ruining game balance. So, but yeah, this was the first time I used Celine to get back to it. I really enjoyed using her. Um, she started, like, getting a wee bit more unusable towards the later section, so I was like, she, she seemed like the perfect character to use Byleth on. And I gave her the other pair of boots as well. Actually, just to say that, I gave Aaliyah the first pair of boots, I gave Celine the second pair of boots, and she became our dancer later on, which I absolutely loved. So she's actually got, um, six move here, plus the canter. I never used Tharsis, because... I, honestly, it's just no coming into play. Unfortunately, it's just no coming into play for me. Everything's dead by the time Thursus, I even notice Thursus is there. So I don't know if the weapons we buy left are all that amazing, unless you're specifically building something around it. It even feels unnecessary, you know, but... Yeah. She basically, for the second half of the game, she just became, like... A, a bit of a healer, and... She was using Eleven Sword a lot, and she helped a lot on stuff like Ike's Power Log, and because she was doubling with Eleven Sword, and uh, I don't have really too much to say about Celine other than the fact that I did enjoy using her, and she was a really good damage dealer early on, which was I was grateful for in the beginning stages, and then in the later stages, she was an amazing Byleth dancer. Like, much better than the main character. Because she can actually, like, take advantage of the Divine Pulse Plus. You get what I mean? Because she's got so much luck. 45 with Byleth. So, yeah. Really liked her. One of my favorite characters now. I feel like I would use her in my next playthrough as well. Because I find her damage dealing early on and utility late game just overall amazing. Alchrist. Don't know what to say about this guy. I, I kind of feel a little bit the same about him. That I do with that, that I do with Diamond, actually. Where I kind of felt like Diamond is a pretty bad character in his Lord class. Don't think Alchrist is as bad as his brother, but unless you're giving him some serious favoritism like Lin and that, then man, he doesn't he feel like he does a whole lot. We gave him Erica here, and it only started coming into play in the last few chapters where he was actually doing something. Uh I don't know. I think he's okay, but he's not... I think he's okay. Um, but... If he didn't even have Erica, he wouldn't have been doing jack shit. You know, he's not someone that stands out on his own anyway. He needs a good emblem to be good, right? And some characters like that, like Ivy, kind of like how I was at the start. It's like, without Lynn, she's maybe just like... She's just good and she can do stuff. But, like, she's not going to be, like, the best thing ever without, like, a dedicated emblem making her fucking awesome, right? And I feel that way about Alchrist as well. Problem is, it, it's much later in the game that you get Siegland in, like, Lunar Brace Plus because you have to do Erica's Paralog in that. So, like, in the beginning stages and the mid stages, I feel like you're needing them all that much because you've got your warrior there with the bows as well. And that's what I'm saying, like, with the warrior being good in that section of the game, people like Alcris don't shine out as much, it feels. But I did make him use Lin, like I was saying, on the Psalm Palace so we can make that level as easier as possible and feed some kills, some boss kills to people. I like the Brave Bow and the Lunar Brace stuff, but I'll be brutally honest, it came into play at a section of the game where we just didn't even need the damage because our other killers were killing everything anyway. You get, you get what predicament I'm having with that stuff there? That's the predicament we were in, like stuff was already dying. So, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be looking at Alchrist to fix a problem right away. On chapter 25, though, I did need him a bit more because, like, we'd done the skip to go into the middle room and he was not one-shotting someone with Sieglin, though, unfortunately, but he did twin strike one and, like, the corrupted damage was really, really, really good. 
At the end of the day, I'm a wee bit confused about some characters that we could do better on with another run, and I feel like we could do better than an Alchrist, probably. But I don't know what I would replace it with. I just feel like we could have done something better with Lunar Braves Plus, but this team was just too strong with our damage dealers to the point where we didn't even need Lunar Brace Plus. You get what I mean? I see a lot of people like buying Lunar Brace for almost all their characters these days, and I'm like, I don't know why I would even need that if I've got some Mage Knights. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, I mean, it would make everybody do some damage somewhere, I think, but... I don't know. I think... I think if I'm going to try, like, another class going forward, it'll probably be a Martial Master. And I feel like Lunar Brace Plus will be a lot better on name from what I've been seeing with people. But, um, I didn't rely on Luna or anything in the playthrough for, for him, so... And he wasn't fast enough to double without Lin, so... You know, there's that, too. So yeah, that's why the Brave Bow came into play, because it takes advantage of a double, and it also takes advantage of the Lunar Blaze Plus. So like, in the 20s, you can kill Armor Knights with it, which is helpful. It definitely is helpful, but it's not like you're needing it with a couple of Mage Knights killing everything, and Ivy killing everything, or, or Zelkov and that, and Panette, that's what I'm saying. But, overall, I don't know if Alchrist is someone who sticks out in the game to me, because he is just a sniper. Um, and I don't know what other emblems we could have gave him to make him better. Yeah, Lin, but I, I had Lin on someone else. And I'll tell you right now that Lin on Ivy, I think right like right now, is far more valuable than someone like Lin on Alchrist on a flying wyvern rather than a dude with a bow. I just, I think so. Please let me tell me what you think about that. I mean, like, obviously I've not tried Alchrist with Lin all the way through, but it feels like a bit of a waste of a, of Lin just having it on a standard sniper when I can have it on someone who's flying with magic. Y you get what I mean? Or someone who's flying in general even, or or someone else, basically. I just don't know if I think it's amazing on bow users other than for the, the covert. But like, if you're doing covert bow shenanigans, you're playing a different game, I guess. Maybe you're like pulling bosses early on all the time and that's no summon we were doing all the time. We've done it on the Psalm. Palace of Psalm. And like pulled them in just so we could feed some kills. But even then it wasn't like, oh this Alchrist is amazing we'll in here. It was like, it was okay. But, um, hmm. Not really got too much to say about it. I've not really got too much to say about it other than a brave bow with Lunar Brace can kill an armor knight. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, yeah, it does. But um, I think our other guys were too strong to even like be relying on Alchris to be helping us that much. If you, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, the Goldie. Here's Goldie who came in and she actually replaced Louie. Because I used Louie at the beginning of the game. Um, as a standard tank. We didn't go into General this time. We went into Great Knight with Louie. And then I replaced Louie with Goldie at that point of the game. Actually, Louis was doing a wee bit better, but I decided to drop him and just bring Goldie in instead because she had a better res stat and all that stuff. The problem is... the same problem that I kind of ran into with some of the other units, where... everything was mostly dead by the time Goldie needed to do anything. You know? So it's like, man... what else could we could I have done? Because we didn't need a great night. It sounded good at the start, and it was funny. And, like, I like Goldie. I do. Like, she's pretty good. Like, her defense is really, really good in that. But, like I was saying, I wasn't ever looking at Goldie to fix a problem. Much similar to, like, how I felt on the first playthrough. She can defo do stuff. That's what I mean. But the thing is, my other characters were better, so I didn't really need her doing stuff. So, she's just sitting there looking cool. Which is fine. And I was like, oh, I'll just put Leaf on her, I guess. So she can maybe do some quadruple hitting in that. And, like, she can take good hits with the Silver Great Lance and all that, though it's... It was good. But, um... I, I didn't look at her to be fixing a problem. But it's, it's a good unit to have covered on a team, I think. And I was fairly happy with it. Yeah. Vale. She came in, obviously, as, like... Was it the 13th member? Yeah, she came in as the 13th member... And 
I was like, I want to put her on Wolf Knight, a magic Wolf Knight, and that's exactly what I did. And I gave her Lucina, and that's when I gave, like, Panette Roy, you know? Because I was like, I'll give Vale Lucina so she can be Dublin as well with the magic dagger. Loved it. I really do wish we got to play as this character a wee bit earlier so, we c so I could have had more fun with this. Really, really fun character. It was a real good way to still cover the dual assist plus poisoning. And even then, the Misery Cord, or however it's pronounced, was a really, really good magical dagger. And she done good damage with the Silver Dagger as well. I got Eleven Sword in there, but we didn't ever need that. We got Speed plus three, we got Canter. There's nothing bad about it. I gave her one Spirit Dust. Just to keep her magic up a wee bit. Because we lost some going into Wolf. Yeah, she was also like bonded shielding, so dude, there's like nothing bad about it, you know? <laughs> it was a really, really good character. I also put the Fire Emblem engrave on, on the Misery Cord, and it felt like it's supposed to be used on it, because that's when Aaliyah gets that Fire Emblem engrave, right when she comes in, and it buffs up that dagger somewhat, some ridiculous. Yeah, dude. Wolf Knight, Veil, vale, very, very strong. Um, we could have gave her some like Draconic Hex and that, but we didn't need it. We only had one character with Draconic Hex. Stuff was dying anyway. Um, no got much to say about it other than it was really, really fun to use, fun to play for the, like, three chapters we got to play it, you know? It's like we didn't get to play it for that much because she just comes in too late, which I think is the problem with Veils and, like, Marv and that, but it's just, I wish she got them a wee bit earlier, that was all. So, like, you could enjoy what you're doing with them a wee bit more. But that's the way it is. Marin. Wasn't he that good, unfortunately. Um, this is a Griffin Knight Marin. And seriously, I didn't know what to do with her. Because obviously she comes in and with, with a pooch. And she's good by default that way. But I was like, obviously I don't want to try Marin again in dogs. So we wanted to try someone else. But I was like, if I still want to use Marin, what good we make her? Well, we made her a Griffin. And it wasn't all that good. She was mostly just going around staff botting damage dealer though she was not that good you know I don't know what else I could have gave her we I did have a shitload of like materials left over in that but like I still didn't really know what else to buff because everything was dying anyway so I gave her Marv Silver Greatlands to do some damage here and there one problem with Marin is she has low HP I noticed this I don't know if that's specific to Griffin but every time I was trying to get some damage on someone she was like outright getting one-shotted um, she, yeah, she was getting fucked up. Um, yeah, I, I, in the start I had Lucina on her when I put Roy on Panette for a bit, so that was cool. And then I was like, when I got Marth back, I put Marth on her and gave Lucina, t Lucina to Veil. So, yeah, even Mercurius in that didn't really make her do any damage. I was thinking about turning her into a sword griffin at one point and doing 11 sword, but I was like, we've got too much magic anyway, we didn't need it. And I was like, well, maybe I'll give her a silver blade so we could have a good Lord Star Rush. Stuff was dying anyway. We didn't need it. So it was kind of like better she was just going around healing. But then I was like, why would I just no use Hortensia earlier if that's all she's doing? Yeah, weird stuff. We're just trying to find stuff to do at that point. And yeah, I mean, it's better having someone flying with staffs than no having anyone flying with staffs. Overall, utility. She was, we turned her into utility, probably a waste of her talents, definitely is, but you know, you don't want to play every playthrough the same, do you? It's like, sure, we can use Dog Marin, but we've already established that Dog Marin is good, so what's the point in doing that even more? I think Dog Panette may be better than her. Yeah, because she's actually strong. 14th member came in with a base Hortensia. She's only level 2, and that's because Hortensia doesn't really need anything to be good, and I thought she was an easy 14th member to come in, better than Marv, you know, I just had her come in right off the bat with S rank and staffs, bruh, so it was like, okay, how's this no good, you know, sure she's got like shitty HP, but what does she need leveled for, you know, I gave her Canter and I gave her Divine Pulse, she got both of them by default coming in at base, insane to me when like, she's the best staff unit, I don't think like, I don't think anyone can really deny it. She come in for free with her bases. She's flying. She can heal and mend at two range. Man, what a great 14th member she was just coming in like you'd been using her for the whole game, you know. Really enjoyed it. Hortensia is definitely like... 
just one of my favorite characters to use as well, actually, for no investment whatsoever, other than, like, a Master Seal. <laughs> Great character, my favorite staff unit in the game, you know. Definitely. And obviously, obviously she helped us out with the warping and rescuing and stuff on Chapter 25, which was nice, and... I've got much else to say about it. Dudes, that's my team for, like, the third playthrough, you know? We finally got round to it. RE4 stopped me at the start, but, um... Finally got round to it. I loved it. Oh, here's Louis because we used him for a bit in the Great Night. My top characters in the playthrough: Ivy, Disgusting, Panette, Ultra Disgusting, Zelkov, even more disgusting, and the icing on the cake being Chloe. Characters were fantastic to use. Absolutely loved them. Enjoyed my third playthrough. Like I'm saying, I don't know what we would do for a fourth playthrough. You know, like I've said before, I feel like one of the problems with this game, not that it's a problem, is that obviously it doesn't have route splits and stuff, which kind of like deters me from doing multiple playthroughs because it's always the same story. And like, at the end of the day, right, do we really get anything out of using shitter characters? You know, I, with this game, I'm a wee bit in two minds about it. Because it's like, all I would do with clan is just turn him into a mage knight and then he'd be okay. You know, but there is better people that come in and it's just like, oh, we're struggling for the sake of struggling a wee bit more. It's That's what kind of gets me about, like, if I want to do a replay with some of the, like, the other characters that I've no done. It's not going to be all that different because all we're going to be doing is changing them into the stuff that works anyway. You get what I mean? And that's what kind of deters me from doing, because I've done like... 10 plus playthroughs of Madden on three houses, but there was always something a wee bit different with the routes and you were forced to use other characters. You get what I mean? So it's not like you are forcing yourself to use like low tier units in this game. I could do a playthrough like that, sure. But then I'd just turn one of them into a wyvern to see how they perform and it'll be fine, you know? But it will only be amazing, it'll be fine. And then it's the same with like some other characters and classes. It will only do anything amazing, it'll be fine, you know? Um, but yeah, that's my third playthrough. These were the characters I used. Like I say, don't really care too much about still using DLC, but if I do a fourth playthrough, I will maybe use the Xenolog characters. But even then, I still kind of feel like, so what, I would use Marnie as a general or Great Knight? Okay. So like, she'd just end up being what Goldie is. You know, that's what I mean about the replayability a wee bit. It's a wee bit no... I'm not as enthusiastic about doing as many playthroughs because all we're doing is turning them into stuff that works. I genuinely feel like in this game it's not necessarily the characters that stick out, but it's the classes that stick out more than the characters. And, you know, the characters feel like skins. Does that make sense? Hmm. Let me know what you think about that though. But I do absolutely enjoy this game. I adore this game. I just think... I don't think I'll be playing it as much as I did Three Houses, just because there's no reason to play it that much. Um, and I don't really enjoy the DLC for the game, so that kind of kills that aspect for me. I don't need the game to be any easier than it already is. Um, I don't like struggling in strategy games, but I don't like having blatantly overpowered shit for free. Uh, I've always kind of been like that. So I kind of like, I don't mind having a broken unit if I create them and put effort in. But if I'm just giving like bullshit for free, I don't really like it. But I don't know. I would like to know what other people feel about stuff like that. How you's how many playthroughs have you done before you've called it quits? Do you genuinely feel like you've needed to play every character in this game to get a good understanding of it? And I feel like I have a relatively good understanding for this game and feel pretty satisfied after my third playthrough. I did take a wee break in between, but that's only because some other games came out. Tasty Channel does not only play Fire Emblem, despite uh, popular belief. But cheers to everybody who hung out for the stream for the third playthrough. Like I say, I, I do apologize it took so long in that, but, you know, I don't really make the videos on Fire Emblem for any sort of, like, financial gain or some sort of viewership gain or anything like that. It's mostly just because I like the games and want to do videos about them, so... Um, we will be doing a wee bit different videos for the next game that comes out though. I kind of feel like as much as I like doing Let's Plays, I'm kind of like, 
and as much as our Let's Plays is kind of like a guide for people, it would probably be better... I, I will do, still do a Let's Play, but I think it would be better to also pick out some parts of the Let's Play that's easier for people to watch rather than like a full hour's worth of a map or something. Do you get what I mean? I would really do prefer doing little videos where we talk about our units and that is quite nice actually, but I like having a purpose behind it rather than just like talking about something that's probably useless that everybody already knows, you know, so. Nonetheless though guys, thanks very much to everybody who watched this third playthrough on Twitch and everybody who supported this playthrough on YouTube as well. Really hope we get Genealogy of the Holy War remake within like a year. That would be amazing. But I don't want Engage to be forgotten about because I genuinely feel like some stuff done in this game was amazing. If any of you stuck around for the whole of this video, thanks very much. Uh, maybe it's not as interesting because we don't use DLC for people, but I feel like DLC makes the game a bit too easy. And trying to have a plan for characters by the end game is a wee bit harder to go about it. I much prefer playing the game without DLC. I'm not like saying pl playing with DLC is bad or anything. I really no saying that at all. I just feel like I enjoy playing this game specifically without any sort of DLC because I feel like that's a better way that was intended by the devs, you know, but I, at the end of the day it feels like I don't know what's intended by the devs because the DLC is so strong. <laughs> so it really does make you wonder, but I don't know, I'm a wee bit worried about Fire Emblem going forward as well, because if the DLC for this game was this strong, I wonder how the DLC for the next game is going to be. Like, is it going to be as busted, you know? Like, I would wonder. I would genuinely say some of the DLC in this game kind of like turns it from being a strategy game into not so much of a strategy game, you know? It just makes it a bit too face roll. Uh, but I would like to know what people think about stuff like that. Nonetheless, guys, thanks very much for checking out this video, seeing how my units performed. The third playthrough was amazing. Thank you very much to everybody who hung out for it, and take it easy.